is this a case of, I don't want to use the expression, one bad apple, but let's say the Tesla case is a one bad apple. Is it, you say, it's likely going to spoil the whole basket. I feel it's also going to spoil Because MTN basket. is hanging in there, it's got its own problems, and then so the same thing is FX anyway. Yes, it's, it's, very, it's very obvious. Um, there's no way a uh, tariff that started from 100 Naira then when they started is currently around 20 Naira on the average. Um, plus per minute to make calls. And call is also dropping. Most people use uh, the WhatsApp to make calls internet based. So for them, top line in terms of revenue is dropping significantly across the sector. And CapEx it has, it has increased as a result of the devaluation or depreciation of the Naira. OPEX has also doubled. For most of them, the base station, though, they are about source. Base station, you, um, you use diesel, you have at least two standby gens that you have to run 24 hours. And the cost of diesel have also increased. OPEX is also increasing. So it's, it's going, the, I think the regulator, NCC, should look beyond just the Etisalat issues. What can they do to amend this um, the the policy around around uh, that sector so that they can attract foreign uh, foreign investor or investment into the sector in other words the meeting today between ncc and the central bank of nigeria should look beyond the tisalat debt world and say hold on a second perhaps this is a symptom of a problem brewing with the other telecommunications company that we're not aware of so perhaps this gives an opportunity to use one stone to kill two birds and say look Central Bank will have to tell the NCC, hold on a second, but you, do you need to look at the tariff? We need to talk to the legislators, we need to talk to the presidency of the executive branch, and then tell the central bank, what do we do with the FX? Because the central bank has tried to do a few things with the petrol importers, with the airline operators. Uh, okay, so is it a time to look into the telecommunications and use a as a as a test case, as a guinea pig story to to prevent a bubble from busting in that sector. Because if you, if you allow any of this to go down, you're looking at human resource issue here. If MTN, if it is allowed, and the rest of them glue start laying off stuff massively, we got a problem. I think, yeah, you are, you are spot on. Um, in terms of when you look at this, it's technically very important uh, sector. Um, you look at, in terms of even how they have also helped in terms of businesses. Before, when you recall, before the privatization of the space, how you have to travel before you you um, you execute any business and so so it's very critical. We need very smooth um, network in terms of um, very smooth and efficient network. So I, the CBN needs to look beyond on, on uh, just beyond Etisalat. See how they want to also assist in terms of the FX. So in quote is to subsidize FX for some of these companies, but that can't be also sustainable. So NCC, on the other hand, now needs to look at what can we do? We've privatized um, this sector, we've deregulated it, allow demand and supply to determine rate because there's competition, it's not just a monopoly um, market. If um, they would be mindful of also increasing their rate beyond because there's, there's glow, there's, the, there's MTN, there's Etisala. So allow them to determine their prices. And yeah, we shouldn't be making things look in terms of political will not to increase increased rates, that will continue to amper and continue to affect this sector. Uh, we've got about five minutes in this conversation or less. So is AMCOM 2.0 a possible lifeboat? I don't think um, that they should. Uh, like the way the first one was structured, you discovered that most of those loans have not even been recovered because um, for the way uh, the, the loans were advanced, documentations were not, were not uh, perfected. So that will not even encourage the CBN to go on how to come up with, um, with a two point, the AMCON 2.0. Mm -hmm. What we, we, we expect maybe they may do, they may bring in the private sector to look at they, on a sector basis. So what are the challenges? What can we do to restructure if I'm buying it off? At what rate am I buying off? So the private sector coming in to buy the loan at a particular price would have also looked at in terms of documentation of this loan, what's the probability of recovering some of this loan. So it's not about just taking it off. And if you also just throw that out like that, it means that the banks, in terms of being disciplined, uh, would not also be there. They know once you accumulate loans, there will be another 3.0 that will come and clear 
clear, clean my books, and I can always just give a loan without trying to do proper documentation. A quick one, and the last one. Uh, some folks have been on, on, on Twitter since yesterday when the Tisola story came out and said, look, does this make a scenario possible to say, with today, perhaps we should bring in the SEC and the Nigerian Stock Exchange and say, Bingo, here we go. It is a lot. Get on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Get listed. Maybe we should just uh, just keep uh, the others, Etel, um, uh, MTN, and, and Glow, say, look, come and list on the Stock Exchange. Maybe this is, this is a nice time to get that done. Yes, um, I feel this is a very nice opportunity to raise long term capital. They will be able to reduce that debt burden and they will be able to run smoothly. Um, the capital market has picked up in the past um, two months and um, confidence has improved. Um, it, depending on valuation and we're able to see how sustainable their earnings is, I feel investors will be willing to invest. Um, MTN still working on the listing process. If Etisalat, if they can also um, exploit that option, I feel it's something that you can raise equity capital that will reduce your debt burden and you'll be able to sustain your business. A fantastic conversation. Uh, we're going to look at, we're going to listen to everyone today and see what the regulators will come up with as a final statement as to the resolution of this issue. But of course, the non performing loans conversation is not over yet. Yes. Uh, Thanks for coming. Thank you. I'm Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Afrinvest Securities.